Hi, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Uh, first of all, thanks very much to everybody who's uh, subscribing and watching the series. I'm getting a lot of positive feedback and uh, it really makes it feel worthwhile. We keep trying to raise the bar, obviously on the production level of the videos to make them more interesting for you. And the comments are, are very welcome and uh, a lot of fun to read. I'm sorry I don't get into reading them back and answering them immediately, but I try my best to, to at least view them all and give comments back on the, uh, uh, on the ones that probably raise the most interest. As I've been reading the remarks uh, and comments, I've been seeing that there's a lot of interest in me uh, taking particular cars out of the lineup. But I wanna start with the, uh, today, with the BMW uh, 4 Series, the latest one, which is the G22. If we look at it from the side view, I have to say that I really do like it uh, for certain reasons, and I really dislike it for a few other reasons. I have to say that it doesn't really come across to me as a as an honest interpretation of a BMW as we expect it, as, as a BMW would expect it. And it's it's obviously a BMW under the skin. It's a uh, it's magnificent car. At the same time, when you're looking at a car from the side view, I see a lot of cues, design language cues that have been sort of uh, eliminated for whatever reason to give a new look to the BMW. And that's been happening slowly over the last few generations. The design, cues that they've established or are looking to establish look a little bit more in common with other cars on the market today. So they, they it seems that the 4 Series has lost a little bit of those factors that make it uniquely, uniquely BMW. That item I just circled there is what we call the C-pillar. Now that C-pillar on a BMW for the longest time has been very consistent in the way they've treated it. There's a, a feature there that it was developed by a designer called Hofmeister and they, they call it the Hofmeister Knick or the kink. And so that kink has been very special. If you look at a previous BMW, you'll see immediately what I'm talking about. But the way they've angled that now has again not 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 bad the way they've done it it's just lost that personality that 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 trait that really made it identifiable as a BMW and so by angling it a bit further back that way without having that return on it uh, it is suddenly becoming a little bit more uh, like other cars do it I wouldn't call it generic but it is more normal than what we would expect to see on a, on a BMW and then in the past that line there has been very distinct on most BMWs throughout the last generations and by going away from it you can see what they've now done is they've sort of unconnected that line and softened it taking off that little crease that they had that gave it a lot of tension and it's almost became something that has sort of blisters in the front blisters in the back which has been done and is being done by many many companies so that that losing of that feature is de-BMWing the vehicle quite a bit. They have done it nicely. The surfacing is, is absolutely beautiful, as on all BMWs when they do treat uh, complex surfaces. But then again, you can see that they've kind of moved it down into that area there. And that area there is done on many other cars. So leaving something behind that was very traditional in a good way, a very positive, very understanding, very identifiable element. They've, they've sort of normalized their own car with that. I've seen this done many times in the industry, especially if you look at this area here, it's becoming very normal to see a little feature of an air vent coming out of the uh, wheel well, the front wheel well. And you can argue, okay, they've tried to do it in a way that kind of aligns with the A-pillar, but again, it doesn't really align with the A-pillar. If I took an extended or extrapolated that line, it's going there. The A-pillar is way out, out of alignment, or that line is way out of alignment. You can see on the side that they have constructed this feature here to have a bit of alignment in through the bumper line there. It's a strong line on the side, not so strong, obviously, on the, on the bumper because it's just a cut line but they have held that together pretty well. The car in, in, in proportions itself holds together very well. It's got a very balanced feel to it. The wheels feel like they're uh, in, in a very correct space on the overall uh, side view of the vehicle. BMWs typically don't have a long overhang. They keep tend to keep it very short in the front, a bit longer in the rear. So in that sense, it holds true to the values that BMW uh, have all in all I think from the side view although it's very dynamic very pretty car very attractive it's also obviously a little bit longer a little bit uh, wider and slightly higher than the outgoing model uh, those proportions do uh, help to make the car a little bit more 
um, emotionally dynamic looking. I don't like the fact, obviously, that cars are still getting bigger and bigger all the time. I think there has to be a, a limit to how, how, how big you need to make a car to stay in that, that segment that it is. But they've kept the proportions really, really nice in the vehicle. Moving towards the back of the vehicle, we can start to see what I mean with some of the feature lines do give it its own character, but I would have to say a little bit less than what we would expect from BMW in terms of maintaining the BMW look. But again, it's it's a lot happening, especially in this area here. You can see a lot is going on. This feature here, the air vent down here that takes air out of the rear of the car, not that it's uh, bad, but again, it's not really a strong enough feature to build a design language off of. BMWs have always had very identifiable taillights on the vehicle. Not that these aren't identifiable, it's just a new direction for BMW, but I see it as an attempt now to steer BMW's uh, design direction in a way that is creating a new identity. Maybe it's the time now for BMW to do that. I've never felt that BMWs are unattractive and that they have to try something else. But again, standing still is, is like going backwards in car design. So uh, hats off to BMW for trying new things and new design features on the car that, that could eventually lead to being the new look for a BMW. So now as I come to the front view, uh, say a three quarter front view of the vehicle, this obviously is, is like we're talking about the elephant in the room. And uh, uh, um, yeah, this is a tough one. I mean, <clears throat> I'm, I'll be the last guy to say, uh, stay with the language you have and don't ever try to change it. Everything has to modernize itself in a certain way. Now I understand uh, looking at this view, first of all, the headlights, I, I love them. I think they're, they're very modern looking. There's, a bit of sinisterness in them and the fact that they're a little bit tucked in you know and they give them a little bit of that that slanted sort of like i'm going to get your looks so and move out of the way or i'm coming through it's a nice nice feature the headlights look very very unique in the sense that the light signature the the down the road look when you're actually looking at this vehicle coming at you you'll know it's a bmw but i don't really like the intakes below the headlights i think it's a little bit confusing what's actually going on down there you know, do you have one intake or is that seven intakes or, or what? So there's uh, a little bit of a loss of control, I'd say, in the sense of how to design something that has a certain purpose, but without making it look over-designed. Now we get to the uh, discussion point that I've been holding back a little bit. This grill, if it's a grill, it looks like nostrils to me. It doesn't look like the graphic department knew that they were going to be designing kidneys for the new BMW. It's just a, a graphic that doesn't sit well with the proportions of the rest of the car, for sure. It doesn't go well with the shapes that you see surrounding it. I can understand, you know, trying to make a statement, but there's a certain sense of refinement that you have to bring in when you do something like this. Uh, Again, if they would at least have used the same design language around as they have around the car to doing the grill. Um, and obviously a designer's responsibility is to understand that the registration plate, the license plate is critical when you do a front design, front graphic on a car. You can't forget about the registration plate. It's like forgetting about the logo or forgetting about anything that's, that you know is ab absolutely necessary to bring onto the vehicle by having put that number plate right there, it is such a cop-out in the design of this vehicle. You might say, well, it has to go on there. Yeah, that's why it needs to be considered and, and not stuck on at the last minute. It's It really is. If you look at those prior BMWs in the history, they never placed the, the registration plate over the grill. First of all, a car today doesn't need that size of an intake. You know, as cars get more modern, they're, they're more efficient and the grill size doesn't have to be as big as it used to be. And this is going just for that grab your attention graphic. The car is beautiful. A lot of the design is, is, is very well done on this vehicle. And they've taken and ruined, I think, the front look of this car with such a graphic that doesn't look I'm not even sure if BMW designed this. I think it might have come from 
I don't know where it came from. It's very difficult to understand how you can put a grill so different to the rest of the car on it with the intention of obviously creating a, you know, a very characteristic uh, element, but it's just, I think, uh, unrefined. Uh, you're missing a lot of the uh, identification of the BMW ribs that are uh, usual in the grill. What would have benefited is basically to soften slightly you know, kind of like that a little bit, give it a little bit more of the curviness of the rest of the features on the car. I would have separated the two grills. So you basically, you're looking at something that um, doesn't meet up in the middle as it does at the moment. So you have to separate, put a little bit of space between the two. We're, we're talking about two kidneys in the end. Um, that's what BMW has always called their their uh, their graphic look, the two Nieren. Nieren is kidney in German. Um, or kidneys, but what you have to do is actually find a way to separate the two. Now, if you look at them, they're very closely joined in the middle, and that takes away the impression that basically they're, they're two elements. And now we're looking at something that is basically one separated by just a very small, uh, not even understandable curvature on that on 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 the component that joins the two of them. It's it's got a lot of emphasis on the grill surround as opposed to to what they used to have. So I guess wrapping it up, I mean, I could uh, rip the grill all day long and, and you know, we're all professionals. We all try to do our best when we're designing these vehicles. And a BMW is one of the most appreciated, one of the most admired car brands ever in the history of, of, of cars. It's a, it's a design language that should be you know, treated with with gloves almost on when you're when you're working on it, and I can understand, like I said, about the evolution of design that you need to keep things moving forward. I think they've done a great job with the actual treatment of the surfaces of the design and and some of those um, excellent surfacing solutions. But my objection to this design is that they have just tossed the baby out with the bathwater in the sense that the things that made it look like a BMW are slowly dissolving away and going in uh, a direction that makes it look more like any other car or like other cars and less like what a BMW is, is known to be. Great surface treatments, great reflections, great proportions, great stance. BMW has always had great stance. They did go through a bulky period, but now they've ripped up a little bit. They've shredded a little bit of that excess weight. When you design a grill, you have to understand that the design of the grill and the rest of the car are one, not two. And I think that that's the problem with the BMW here, the the the, the, the new 4 Series, is that they've designed the grill and then they've designed the car and they've brought the two together and they're not speaking the same language. And it's a bit of a shocker for, for, for most viewers when they see that for the first time. Looking at the car at a quick glance, uh, if it was without looking at the front of the car, I'd give it about a, an eight. I think it's done very well, uh, surfaced very well. Uh, but as soon as I see that front end, immediately it's got to go down a few notches because it's one of those uh, good from far, far from good approaches. So uh, I'd have to bring it down probably to a, you know, nothing higher than a six for this car simply because it just disappoints me when I look at it at the front. So thanks for watching that. If there are any cars you'd really like me to review and give my design uh, view on it, design judgment, please leave them in the comments below and I'll have a look at them and we'll pick out the very best ones. And so let's do it. Let's keep it going.